Please share your thoughts in comments and like this video. A white-haired man with blue eyes is so happy that he finally managed to defeat a monster. He went to the Adventurers Guild in his village and shouted to everyone that he had amazing news. With blood all over his body and a slime above his head, he exclaimed that he was able to kill two slimes. The whole Adventurer Guild was silent for a while and blasted into laughter. They teased him for getting wounds from a mere slime. Even a normal man wouldn't get those wounds even in an F-rank dungeon. He asked them to not underestimate slimes as they would bite when they were serious. Someone countered it with a mocking smile that they had no idea about. Because they would kill the slime in an instant. The boy's name was Loa Foyle who is the low-level adventurer in his village. Someone teased him if he was trying to become the world's low-level adventurer. This was a game-like world where everyone possessed skills and levels. Without heeding his ear to the mockery, Loa went to the counter and presented the magic stones he got from killing the slimes and he expected to get one million merce as he thought that the crystals were rare. But to his disappointment the crystals were worth only for three merce. Merce is the currency used in this world. He argued with the guild staff to give him more as he wouldn't even be able to afford a meal with that amount. Otherwise he had no choice but to eat grass and bugs outside. But the staff rejected it as it was just how business worked. It was confirmed that Loa was going to have bugs and grass as his dinner tonight as well. The staff called him and asked about his status. He was once level 25 but now he was only level 10. It showed that Loa had consumed his levels again. He also agreed to that as he had no choice as he needed a replacement for the broken sword in order to defeat the slimes. It was because Loa had a unique skill where he could make an item in exchange for his own level. But the weapons are not some legendary weapons but regular weapons used by everyone. The staff found this skill to be pretty cool but Loa was upset about it. He needed to consume levels so he couldn't make items indefinitely. Meaning he won't be able to become a merchant. He also becomes weaker as he creates items so no one accepts him into their party. So he wasn't able to gain money nor experience. Every day he was trying his hardest to level up by fighting the weak monsters but he still had to use his skill. This time, there was one slime looking down on him. The staff had to admire his resolve. When they were talking, a sudden gust of wind flew through the room. It made all the dust lift from the ground. Loa knew about the wind and the person behind it. It was Carter who teased Loa for making only a small amount of money. The other adventurers berated him for using wind magic inside the guild but he wasn't afraid of them. He was arrogant because his father was the only businessman in this village who sells items. He blackmailed them that he would make it hard for them to not get any healing items which were essential for survival when raiding a dungeon. Carter wanted to brag about his magic in front of Loa while teasing his inability. He teased Loa's skill of creating copper items by consuming his levels. As he already had many copper swords in his shop which took Loa to use his levels. It was just a piece of crap in front of him. Loa ignored him and made his way outside as he mentioned that he didn't necessarily hate this skill. When he was young, he would view the things he had bought with the little money he had as precious. According to him, if one gains something by spending something precious then it has meaning. He was trying to leave as cool as possible. But the staff mentioned that he had forgotten his three merce. He couldn't lose his hard-working wage so he collected that amount. He was happy that he could at least buy salt with that. Carter hated Loa more than anything because of his hard-working nature. The next day, Loa went to the dungeon as always. No matter what anyone says, he would continue to use his skill because that's his only option. Levels are not the only points one needs to get stronger. One also needs skill points. Skill points are what you get when you level up. When you use those, you could gain new skills and magic. But because of his item creation skill, Loa's level keeps going up and down. Because of that, he won't get any skill points even if he levels up. In other words, no matter how much he leveled up, he couldn't learn any skills or magic. That's why Loa trained with his sword and tried his hardest. At last, Loa managed to reach level 49 which he had lost due to item creation. He believed that he would be able to beat the monster on the lowest floor and made his way there. He needs to expect more than getting a few scratches here and he might actually die if he messes up. But if he could defeat that monster, he might actually be able to put an end to the days where he barely makes any money. As he moved forward, he found the barrier. Behind it, is the dungeon boss. Once he entered the barrier, he couldn't exit unless he killed the boss. He might not win but he decided to do it for the sake of changing his horrible life. He wouldn't mind dying there. 
suddenly, a figure came towards him and attacked him. Loa blocked the attack successfully. The boss monster was the skeleton swordsman which was E rank. The recommended level for an adventure was 50. Since the level is not far from his level, he believed that it was not an impossible battle. As they battled, he felt that every strike of the boss was much stronger than the mobs he faced. However, it was not comparable to the hardships he had faced until now. He was determined to win and change his life for the best. They once again battled and ended in a stalemate. Loa refused to be overpowered with a sword which he had obtained using his 15 levels. He defeated the boss with his determination and slashed into two. The boss fell down and stopped its movements. As it was an undead, Loa kept his guard against it for a while. As he finally confirmed the death of the boss, he couldn't stop the shaking from the excitement. He exclaimed loudly that he killed the dungeon boss and he was happy with his new achievement. Suddenly, a magic circle formed around him and he wondered what it was. It displayed his achievements of defeating the skeleton swordsman and he reached level 50. His skill item creation had turned into magic creation and Loa obtained a new skill which he always wanted. The scene shifted to the adventurer's guild the next day. Loa made his way to the counter with a huge bag. As he placed it, the staff was shocked to find a lot of gems inside. He wondered what happened as it was different from the usual. Loa didn't reveal his skill despite the onlooker's curiosity. He was just glad that he would be able to eat well tonight. After collecting the money, he went to the cafeteria and ordered a bunch of dishes. He exclaimed the food taste as he had never eaten good food for a while. The onlookers gave a weird look at him as Loa was just enjoying the cheap foods there. Then he remembered about the skill he got yesterday. He tested it out in the dungeon and it seemed to be pretty high quality. As he was happy about it, an annoying character appeared. It was Carter who exclaimed that Loa looked pretty happy. He snatched the jerky from him and ate it. Even though Loa was mad about it, he decided to ignore him to avoid any troubles. Carter asked Loa whether he had got a lot of magic gems which he heard from the staff. Loa confirmed it as he had defeated a lot of monsters yesterday. Hearing that, Carter grabbed Loa's hand and shouted to his dad that Loa admitted that he stole magic gems from their shop. Loa was shocked to hear it. Carter's father came there with a knife and exclaimed that the thieves were worthy of death in an angered voice. As Loa inquired, he came to know that a bunch of magic gems had disappeared from Carter's father's shop. Carter's father accused him as a thief who stole it and exchanged them at the guild yesterday. Carter also added to his father's comment that there was no way that Loa could obtain all those gems by himself. He framed Loa as the thief at the end. Loa asked Carter to stop with his false accusations. Carter used his wind bullet skill and destroyed the table around him. He threatened Loa that he would use it on him again if he played dumb. Seeing the scenario, Loa used his five levels to exchange for some magic. Carter grabbed Loa by his collar and asked him to come clean but Loa still denied it. Carter whispered to Loa that he already knew that but there was a grand prize for capturing the culprit. Since Carter's party is short on cash now, he decided to frame Loa to make some quick money. He was sure that Loa would be caught as he had no evidence to prove that he was innocent. He also revealed to Loa that he was one who really stole all those gems. Loa remained silent the whole time. As Carter planned to take him to the guards, Loa slapped Carter's hand from his collar. He thanked Carter for the information about a grand prize for capturing the culprit. Seeing Loa laughing, Carter once again accused him and asked him to show proof that he was clean. Loa explained that he obtained those by himself and activated his magic. Carter and his father were totally shocked to see Loa activating his magic. Carter refused to believe it until the end that the likes of Loa could use magic. Loa managed to activate a D-rank magic flame spear in front of everyone. It was the proof that the gems that he exchanged were obtained by his own skill. Everyone was still shocked to see the loser of the town using a high-level magic. For the sake of practicing how to use this newly acquired skill, Loa stayed in the dungeon a bit after defeating that skeleton boss. There were many things popped up in his status window and there was also a window with a lot of named magic skills. The mentioned skills were Great Fireball, Thunder Throw, Water Cannon and many more. Some of those skills cost 50 levels and consume 250 magical lower to activate. Seeing the description, Loa came to know that it was the same as his item creation. He was happy that he could trade his levels for more powerful skills unlike before. He could actually use magic during battle. Until now, the only thing he could gain were items and it was super tough to get those levels back. 
but now he could easily defeat monsters using magic. In other words, it was easy to gain the experience and levels he lost from trading skills. He decided to calm down for now as he needed to carefully choose which kind of magic he needed right now. He read all the skills displayed in the window. He wanted to buy a fireball skill but it would consume 250 MP for every attack. In the end, he would be only able to use it one time. So he skipped it and swiped through a lot of magic skills which used less MP. He wanted to have them all but he could only choose one with his current level. He decided on his first skill and selected the fire spear. He traded it for his 25 levels. After he obtained it, he decided to use his other levels to obtain daily life magics. It could cost him only one level and they would also be useful in his hunt. He selected ignition, luminescence, water drinking and many more. As he finished trading, he began to search for small fry to test his magic. Conveniently a cobalt fighter of level 32 appeared in front of him with a cute face. He let his guard down. Cobalt observed Loa's status and it leaped to attack him as it considered him an easy prey. The cute monster changed to a terrifying monster in an instant. Seeing it suddenly, Loa lost his cool for a moment and he was also not mentally prepared for it. He shouted the skill name and extended his hand. Luckily, the magic activated and pierced through the cobalt. Time began to flow slowly in front of Loa. He watched the lifeless body of cobalt fell down with a hole at its chest. He was amazed to see the performance of his magic. He exclaimed that magic was really awesome as he managed to kill a level 32 cobalt in one strike. Now he could easily defeat his enemies even if their levels were vastly different. He also gained 10 levels from defeating the cobalt. The difference between their levels also contributed to the experience gained by him. He gained 10 levels which would usually take him a week. He felt the amazing feeling which one could feel that he's getting stronger. He decided to use his magic creation skill to excel in magic. The scene now switched to the present where Loa activated his magic to prove his innocence. Carter changed his attitude completely and apologized. Because he had no choice as his wind bullet skill was lower level than his flame spear. Loa also cancelled his magic. He mentioned that he also didn't want to cause a ruckus and asked Carter to tell everyone what he had whispered into his ear. As he heard it, Carter pondered in his mind what to say. He didn't want to tell the truth because he was confident that Loa's also didn't have any evidence of his crime. Carter framed the guild staff as the culprit and mentioned that he forced him to not tell anyone. Loa watched the comedy skit that was playing on. Carter turned around and signaled Loa to play along with him. The staff denied that and Carter exclaimed that the staff needed some punishment to admit the truth. He used a spell wind bullet on him. Loa was mad when he saw Carter shifting the blame on the innocent staff. He activated his magic and fired against his spell which cancelled it. He wanted to let Carter take care of this. But he now had no choice as Carter was still refusing to accept the blame. He asked everyone to listen as he had another magic to show. He played the daily life, magic recording which he spent five points on before. With that everyone heard what Carter whispered to Loa's ear. It was perfect evidence and Carter was confirmed as the culprit. Carter still tried to deny it but no one believed him. Carter's father beat him mercilessly for his act and the staff thanked Loa for his help. Everyone praised Loa for his achievements which was evident that they all hated Carter. Loa was glad that everyone wouldn't laugh at him like before. He finally might be able to progress forward. The next day, many party members asked Loa to team up with them but he refused them all. He was invited to five parties that day which showed the importance of magicians. When Loa fights with a party, the experience is divided amongst all of them and that would be bad for his skill. He wanted to monopolize all those experiences to level faster. He thought that it was also best for him that way as he could trade more skills sooner. He was also sick of people backstabbing him. While he was thinking, the staff called him. He was happy as he gave him a new guild card. He mentioned that Loa was promoted from F rank to E rank and congratulated him. Loa was shocked to hear that. The staff explained the adventures were rated by their contributions to the guild and their actual strength. As Loa displayed his strength yesterday, he was acknowledged as an E-rank adventurer. The staff provided him a new guild card with changed color from iron to bronze. Loa was happy and exclaimed that he was the only one who spent most time to get to E-rank in the guild's history. The staff indulged in nostalgia of seeing Loa covered in slime bites which won't happen in the future. Loa went to the E-rank dungeon while holding his new guild card which indicated his eligibility to enter it. 
Suddenly he heard a voice which asked a person named Sonia to take care of the front line better. Loa was scared for a minute and watched an adventurer party hunting. Everyone was shouting at the tank to do her job properly who was the person named Sonia. She apologized and mentioned that she would do her best. Loa could say that it was an uncoordinated party. A tank is someone who blocks the enemy attacks. But Sonia seemed to be frail and she was suited to be on the rear guard. The rear guard job was to protect the mage and long distance attackers from sneak attacks. But she's doing her best to become the target of the enemy as the main tank whose job was to hold the enemy in one place to make it easier for her allies to attack. But she was still treated badly by everyone. Loa confirmed it once again that it was a hassle to join a party. Since it's none of his business, he decided to leave. At that time, a monster sneaked behind Sonia and attacked her. The mage of Sonia's party shouted at her to look behind. But it was too late as the monster was already near her. No one looked after her which led two monsters to attack on both sides. Seeing that there was no way that her defense would make it in time, Sonia ready herself to receive the attack. Suddenly a fire arrow pierced through the monster and she was saved. Sonia was surprised and thanked the mage in her party for saving her. Seeing Sonia thanking her, the mage acted haughty and asked Sonia to bow to her for saving her life. Loa left the place silently and he was glad that no one noticed him. Since it would cause him a bad reputation of stealing other party targets. All adventures are ready for danger like that. Since adventures get so many rewards, they would get mad at people who try to step in to help. But Sonia would have been crushed to bits if it wasn't for him and he didn't want to see that. In the end, he used too much MP on that attack and he once again achieved level 50. Since his magic creation didn't override his item creation, he now had two unique skills. In other words, he would be able to use his item creation to its full potential. He used his 10 levels to create 2 MP restoration medicine. He decided to use his remaining levels to buy new magic skills. He bought an item box to store things which could save him from the trouble of carrying the things by himself. But he needs to carry that box though. He stored the 2 MP potions inside it. He was sure that MP potion would help him to restore his MP faster which would help him to hunt efficiently. He marched forward to level up faster to trade it for magic skills and potions. For three days he battled monsters and created MP potions. He also came across that uncoordinated party from before. On the fourth day, he managed to produce 100 MP potions. He was happy as he didn't need to worry about the MP in the future. He made his way to the lowest floor of the dungeon to take a look at the boss. He saw someone was already inside the barrier where the boss was held. He recognized that it was Sonia who he had seen before. The boss monster was a huge frog which was at level 120. He was shocked to see the huge size of the boss. The boss started to attack her and Sonia struggled to deflect it. Loa found it strange that she was fighting by herself and her party members were missing. He was sure that she wasn't gonna win by herself. She would die if he just sat around doing nothing. He decided to but in but stopped. Since she was an adventurer, Loa was sure that she would be prepared for situations like this. After all, he was also the same as her and he wouldn't want someone to save him. That's how he got this far by himself. He also thought Sonia must be the same as him and dismissed the idea of saving her. Actually that's not the truth, Loa also wanted someone to save him. Nobody came to save him and he felt that asking for help was pathetic. He didn't want anyone to see his weakness and so he repeated those things to himself. He felt getting involved is going too far and that it's also none of his business. But he decided not to mention things like that anymore. He attacked the boss with his powerful magic. But that attack didn't cause much damage. Loa stood in front of Sonia and exclaimed that he couldn't kill it in one hit like he killed the mobs. Sonia was shocked and inquired about his identity. Loa mentioned that he was just an adventurer passing and he was gonna defeat the boss. Sonia dumbfolded to see an idiot climbing the impossible as she compared the level difference between him and the boss. Even though Loa acted cool, he was also worried about the level difference. Sonia was injured severely and couldn't move any longer. Since he barged in, Loa had no choice but to fight the boss himself. The boss attacked him with its tongue and he dodged it successfully. Seeing the impact caused by the boss, Loa was sure that he would die in an instance if he were to be hit by it. He decided to attack it with his magic but the boss attacked him again. It also disturbed his casting and he was on the run from the boss. 
It needed at least four seconds in order for him to activate his flame spear and he won't be able to release it at this rate. Sonia asked Loa to aim for the boss's stomach which is its weak point. He thanked her for the information and pondered about a way to attack it. Though using aiming magic is tough and would take many attacks, he decided to use MP potions to overcome it. Sonia was shocked to see Loa taking out the expensive MP potions. He tried to use it but the boss had a certain level of intelligence as well. It attacked him to stop Loa from taking the potions. The MP potion shattered upon its impact to the ground. Loa took as many potions as possible but every time the boss's attacks shattered the bottles. Sonia asked him to be mindful of attacks rather than try to restore his MP. But Loa asked her to not worry as everything was according to his plan. He aimed for the boss's eyes which gained him some time. He began to cast his magic and ran towards the frog boss. He slid below it and stopped below its stomach. He casted his fire spear magic at the end of four seconds from when he attacked the boss's eyes. It pierced through the boss and it fell sidewards upon death. Sonia was shocked to see the spell. Loa explained that he wasn't trying to drink the restored potions but used the liquid on the ground to reduce the friction to slide. He exclaimed that it was not easy to look cool. Sonia thanked him for his help. She didn't forget to mention the glass shards on his back and Loa mentioned that would happen. Suddenly he felt a surge of power inside and he leveled up to 70 from 40. He also attained a title, Foil the Dungeon Traveler, which would increase his health by 100. Loa was so happy to gain a title which would be hard to obtain. He suddenly heard a sound behind and turned. He saw Sonia passed out lying on the ground. She was on the verge of death as she had pushed herself even before he got there. He created a new MP potion as he had used everything he stored. He asked her to drink it but she denied it as it was too luxurious for her. He forced her to drink it and mentioned that it barely cost him anything. Sonia was surprised to see the potion effects and she had already recovered from her injuries. Sonia thanked Loa for saving her life twice. Loa was surprised to hear the word twice. Sonia explained that she realized after seeing him use his magic that he was the one who saved her from the hobgoblin before. Loa tried to apologize for that but Sonia denied it. She was grateful for his help. Loa then inquired about her party members as they were nowhere to be seen. Sonia revealed that they abandoned her alone while she was blocking the boss's attacks. Loa was angered to hear it and asked for a clear explanation. Sonia mentioned that she stepped into a barrier as she was always the only tanker in the party. But her allies realized that there was no chance of winning so they fled. Loa was angered and asked her why she paired with such scums. Sonia revealed the reason behind it was because of her unique skill. It was called impenetrable and she could only gain defense skills and no attack skills. That's why she had to fight with a party and also had to take even the harshest of treatment. She thanked Loa once again as she would had surely died if it wasn't for him. Loa was angered as he heard more about it. She's the same as him who was also looked down upon for having an inconvenient skill. She was being treated worse than him. Those scums who were her allies used her for their own convenience and abandoned her. Seeing Loa, Sonia wondered if there's anything wrong. Loa suggested going back to the village as he was sure that those scums would be eating there like nothing's happening. Loa decided to interfere in Sonia's matter for one last time. Sonia was also taken back when Loa decided to help her. As it was her first time that something like this happened. In the Village Adventurers Guild, the scums who abandoned Sonia were chatting like nothing's wrong. They never thought that the D-rank monster would be that huge but they were glad to be alive. They laughed at Sonia's fate as she wasn't as lucky as them. As they were chatting about Sonia's fate, Loa arrived there with Sonia behind him. The scum was shocked to see her alive and shouted his thoughts. The mage berated him for shouting that line. She rubbed her eyes to make it seem like she had cried. She went ahead and hugged Sonia as she exclaimed that she was happy to see her alive. She twisted the story as Sonia was the one who rushed and went inside the barrier. Sonia was shocked to see their acting and Loa watched their drama from the sideline. Adventures needed to pay close attention to how they appear. Because if they don't, it'll be hard to gather strong members. In other words, exposing them would be the best way to get revenge. Loa shouted loudly so that everyone could hear that they had abandoned Sonia. His voice was so loud that it could be even heard outside. The scum asked Loa to lower his voice but Loa acted that it was his original voice. Seeing his act exposed, he asked for the evidence. Loa was waiting for him to say that and used his storage magic. 
he brought the D-rank magic crystal he got when he defeated the frog boss. He teased them for not having the chance to have it as they left her. The scum accused Loa of creating the magic crystal with his item creation magic. He also mentioned that it was Sonia's choice to be left alone and asked the onlookers to choose who to believe. But they forgot to look at the shocked Sonia face and anyone could tell the truth by looking at her. Everyone was on Sonia's side and Loa threatened them about their reputation. He didn't need anything like that as he was already a low-rank adventurer. The scum attacked Loa for damaging their reputation. Loa blocked the attack and countered him. Since Loa already had experience of fighting without using any skills, there was no way to beat him in a fist fight. The mage also decided to join the fight. The staff interrupted their fight as he threatened them that he would cancel their guild license if they fought inside. The usually chill staff snapped which shocked the persons involved in the fight. Sonia asked Loa to stop it and dragged him outside. When they went outside, she thanked him as she felt great. Loa was glad that it was worth picking that fight with them. Sonia treated him for saving her and ordered multiple dishes. Loa was shocked to see the high-quality food and wondered if he could really eat them. After Sonia's confirmation, Loa took a bite of the meat. He exclaimed that it was the best meat ever and Sonia was glad that he liked it. She felt it was awkward as Loa was acting too much for a simple dish. Loa explained that he had never eaten that much good food before. Since Sonia was new to this village, he mentioned that he had learned magic just recently. Until that time, he was always laughed at. The reason he also saved her was because she was also just like him. He also revealed that at first he planned to leave at that time. He promised to pay for the meals as he would receive money if he exchanged all the magic stones he had. Despite hearing all that, Sonia was still grateful to him. Because he didn't leave her behind even though she was weak. That's why she decided to pay him back even more. She suggested forming a party with Loa if he was okay with it. As Loa inquired, she revealed that she was a fallen noble and became an adventurer to survive. She became what she currently was from nothing and she believed that they both had that in common. From the previous battle, Loa also realized that it was hard to cast magic if he was alone. But with a tanker like Sonia, they would be able to form a well-balanced party. So he agreed to team up with her. Sonia was happy to hear that as she would be able to properly repay Loa's kindness. They exchanged drinks as they celebrated the formation of the new party. Like and subscribe to learn more about the future endeavors of Loa and Sonia. Comment your thoughts and click on the notification icon to know more interesting stories like this.